Warning, read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. In this video, we will cover customizing mode settings with computer control for the Optics handheld laser system. All users must review the owner's manual in its entirety and be fully trained before using the Optics system. Warning, Class 4 invisible laser radiation can permanently damage eyes and skin. Everyone present during laser operation must wear both the Miller Optics laser welding helmet and laser safety eyewear certified for OD7 or greater at 1070 nanometers. Now let's go over how to connect your laptop or PC to the Optics system. In order to access the Optics web page interface, you must first connect a PC to the welder's Ethernet port with your own Ethernet cable. The Optics uses a fixed static IP address. In order to communicate with the laser welder, the host computer should be configured to have a static address and to be on the same subnet as the Optics system. The table on the screen shows the default IP configuration for the laser welder and the IP settings to use when configuring your PC. Now, let's walk through the steps of setting up your Windows computer Ethernet configuration for the system. First, open your Windows Control Panel, and then select Network and Sharing Center. In the Active Networks list, click on the Local Area Connection corresponding to your network interface or USB Ethernet adapter. Please note that might be labeled as Unidentified Network. On the Local Area Connection Status window, click on Properties. On the Local Area Connection Properties window, select Internet Protocol Version 4 TCP slash IPv4 and then click the Properties button. Select the Radio button 4. Use the following IP address. Fill out the fields for IP address and subnet mask. For example, the IP address could be 10.0.0.1 and the subnet mask could be 255.255.255.0. You don't need to fill in the default gateway. Once you are done, click on the OK button at the bottom. Your Ethernet connection is now complete. Now we will go over the Optics web page interface. To access this web page interface, it is recommended to use an updated version of Google Chrome or Firefox web browser. In the address search bar, type the IP address for your optics and press enter. The default, as previously mentioned, is 10.0.0.20. You will then be directed to the web page interface you see on your screen. You can select from three available tabs on the web interface. The Welder tab opens the main Welder page. Program modes can be updated and created under the Control section. Welder status and error information is also found here. To better understand available modes with the optics, let's briefly go over the different mode types. First, continuous wave. This mode fires the laser at a set power level all the time while the trigger is pressed. Next is tack mode. In this mode, the laser fires at a set power level for a predefined time only, up to four and a half seconds. This is used for identical tack welds. Stitch mode fires the laser at a set power level for a predefined time up to four and a half seconds for a number of stitches. This can be used for tacking or overlap welds. Modulation mode or pulse mode fires predefined pulses all the time while the trigger is pressed. The maximum peak power is 3000 watts. The reduced energy is ideal for slower welds and heat sensitivity. Finally, High Peak Power Mode fires predefined pulses all the time while the trigger is pressed. The maximum peak power is 3000 watts. This is used to penetrate very reflective metals. Now, let's go into more detail on how you can customize modes for the optic system. Just like using the front panel controls, the web page interface enables you to make changes to different load parameters. In this example, we have adjusted the laser power and wobble length for user mode 1. After entering your changes, be sure to save your changes using the Save button. 
Depending on which mode is selected, the mode parameters that must be configured will change as indicated in the image on your screen. In this example, we are updating the parameters for Stitch Mode under User Program 4. As you can see, we are changing the ramp up time, laser on time, wobble frequency, and wobble length. We will then save our settings. To restore the previous settings, click on the Restore button. Now you can see the Stitch Mode parameters have been restored. For your convenience, more information on particular parameters can be found in the Owner's Manual. Now, let's go over the Welder's Status section. The Welder's Status section is a graphical representation of the Optics front panel indicators. This will enable you to troubleshoot which particular status or alarms are causing the error or warning. In the Welder's Status section, when all interlocks are satisfied, the main indicator in the Welder's Status pane will be green. Clicking on the circle with the plus sign will expand to show the list of eight interlocks that must all be satisfied before welding can begin. If the eight interlock indicators are lit green, it means interlock status is okay. Welding can now begin. If there is an interlock error, that particular interlock indicator will be lit red. The main warning indicator will be lit yellow when there is a warning. If there are no warnings, it will be the default gray. Clicking on the circle with the plus sign will expand to show the list of warnings. Currently, there are warnings for no gas temperature and the laser guide not working. Warnings do not prevent laser emission from being turned on and will not turn off laser emission. The main alarm indicator will be lit red when the unit is in an error state. Clicking on the circle with the plus sign will expand to show the full list of possible errors. If there is an error, that particular alarm will be lit red. For more detailed information about the error codes, you can refer to the user manual. When there is an error, the front panel display for power will specify the error code which will correspond to the particular alarm. Unlike warnings, if an error occurs during welding, it will turn off laser emission. Use the Clear Alarms button to clear all alarms. Now, let's cover the other two tabs on the web page interface, which are Settings and Support. The Settings tab opens the network's setting page. The network IP address configuration for the optics can be updated here. For more information on updating network settings, please refer to the Owner's Manual. The Support tab opens the Product Support page. Software and firmware revision information is located here. This concludes computer control for customized settings for the optics system. Please watch our other videos for additional operating instructions and laser welding tips.